Hello friends, for today's video I'm going to be doing a manga and comics reading vlog. A lot of the ones that are going to be picked up are ones that I have started already and I want to continue on with and then a few of them, one in particular, uh, is one that I've been wanting to pick up for a very long time and I'm finally going to start it and I'm really excited. So we'll get around to that one but I want to start with the ones that I have already started and I want to catch up with or read a few more of. So first we have Girl from the Other Side. This has been one of my favorite things that I've read this year, both here on this channel where I read comics and manga and also on my main channel where I read novels. This has stood out to me just in storytelling in general. I have loved it. I don't really know what's going on, but in the best of ways. <laughs> and the idea, if you don't know, is that we follow this really, really sweet, cute, lovely little girl. And she is living with this being who has been cast out of society and based off the fact that that being is her guardian it would seem for some odd reason the little girl might have been cast out of society too but you don't really know why and it seems like she has a family member that's supposed to come back for her but that's also a mystery too it, is that family member ever coming back did something happen to them are they coming back but with something else going on you just don't really know the art style is very, very minimalistic, but also very eerie and very striking. And it really makes it so that whenever there's a big moment, it really hits somehow with such minimal strokes, you still can establish so much. You can convey so many emotions and so many feelings. So really excited to pick this one back up. And then I believe the next bind up will be coming out not too far from now. So <laughs> I really want to keep going with that series. I love it so much. And I've been meaning to pick it up for a while. Anyway, the whole, <laughs> this is not meant to be a review for that. So let's keep going. After that, in the same try a volume video where I tried that series, I also tried Ancient Magus's Bride. I always want to say Magus. I don't know why. That sounds like maggot. And those are gross. <laughs> so I don't know why my brain wants to say it, but it's Ancient Magus's Bride, I think. And uh, I read the first volume. I loved the fantasy elements. There was one particular plot line in the first volume that was so sweet. It had to do with this dragon and nature and taking flight, but that being a metaphor for something else. And it just really struck me. And I thought it was so sweet. And that was probably the highlight of that first volume. There's a couple other elements to it, though, that I'm like... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about some of these other things transpiring in this story, but they did not really make it so that I didn't want to continue. I still definitely want to continue. I really like the world. I like the magic. I think it's really interesting. And I'm curious to see where we go from here. A lot of you said the particular element that I was like, well, I don't know how I feel about this. A lot of you are like, yeah, that makes sense. But also I, I think it won't bug you later. So I'm trusting your word on this one. And then I, I think I was the most hesitant in the, that try volume video with continuing on with Tokyo Ghoul. I like the art style a lot, and I've heard some people actually don't like the art that much, which surprised me because I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> but I I just, the main character, it, I don't know. They uh, were a little one-dimensional for me in the first volume, which it's a first volume, so that's not a lot of time to establish the character. But on top of that, I feel like the first volume, it just took so much time to establish the setup, but that's also what it was doing. It was establishing the whole setup of the story, which is that there are these ghouls that need to eat human flesh, and then due to some very interesting uh, circumstances where our main character needs a transplant and he gets a certain transplant that he probably shouldn't have gotten, now he is part human, part ghoul. And he wants to maintain his humanity, but also all he can eat now is human flesh and coffee. <laughs> I think coffee is the other thing that he can consume. So the first volume, it, it was just a lot of setup. I don't feel like it's fair to have only read the first and then try to make a decision based off of that, but I, I still am on the fence. I'm still not sure. So I think I need to keep going. I might read two and three. Ancient Magus' Bride, I think I'm just going to kind of read here and there when I can, because I don't really anticipate it ever doing anything that really irks me. But I'm waiting for it to really, really grip me in a way that makes me want to just devour the whole rest of the series. But I don't know that I need to read too many more volumes. For both of those though, probably volumes two and three at least. And then after that, we have some comics. We have 
paper girls. I got volumes two and three from my local library. So I'm going to jump back into that one. I only just recently read it, but it's so out there that I'm like, I don't know if I want to wait too long to jump back into that one. Same goes for Saga. I found, if you saw my manga haul and comics, I found this really nice edition uh, used at my local bookstore and in very good condition. And I really, really liked Saga. I thought that the world, the blend of science fiction and fantasy was fantastic. I love Brian K. Vaughan's dialogue, which is true for Paper, Paper Girls also. I just think it's so snappy and quick and tight and funny and witty. And it feels like real people talking. I like the art style in both of those. But I really want to know what happens in Saga, just because I feel so connected to these characters already, and I really want to know what's going to happen next. And then a couple that I wanted to try to catch up on, or just read more of in general. I have up through volume 38 of Yona of the Dawn, so I really want to finally get through all the way to what I have. Some of what I have is from the library, and some of what I, ha I have is mine. So I want to read some more of that. And then... Golden Kamui. I have loved this and I desperately want to read more. <laughs> There's so many things that I have to read and so many things I want to read, I should say. Uh, and then in the back of my mind, I'm like, can I just not read any of it so I can pick up more Golden Kamui? Because I really like Golden Kamui. It's funny. It's like the perfect blend of so many things. It's such a great blend of historical fiction where you actually feel transported to that time. You feel like you're learning. You feel like you're trying to survive alongside the characters. So it's a little bit of a survival story. And then the nature elements are fantastic. And then just the character dynamics are great, the characters themselves. And then there's clearly going to be a bigger plot coming into the picture. So I'm so excited to keep going. And then the big one that I'm like, I need to finally start this. And I'm so excited to finally start it. 20, 20th Century Boys. So my husband has read a fair amount of this, but he never finished it, and I have wanted to read it ever since then. I plan to start it now, and he might join me. He might pick it back up because he wants to start from the beginning again, especially because he said it's really out there, and he is nervous that he's going to have forgotten a lot, and then it won't be as impactful later on. So he might buddy read this with me. We'll see, but so excited to finally start this. I've heard such amazing things. So I will check back in in a week or two and maybe even a couple times just because there's so much that I'm wanting to pick up here and let you know my thoughts on all of this. But that's it for now. So we'll check back in later. So far, I have caught up with Yona of the Dawn. And when I say caught up, I mean even with volume 39, which I guess wasn't supposed to come out till August 1st. But I went to the bookstore recently. It was already out. I grabbed it. I read it immediately. And then I saw it wasn't supposed to come out for a little bit. But I am all caught up with Yona now, which is super exciting. And then I've also read the next couple volumes of Golden Kamui. And those volumes specifically would be volume four and volume five. I'll start with Golden Kamui. My plan is to try and read a couple volumes every week so that by the time the next volume comes out, volume 30, I'll have gotten caught up, but it will also be fresh in my mind. I don't want to get caught up immediately and then have to wait for that next one and then have things be a little bit absent in my mind. I want it to be fresh. And then from there, there will just be one more volume to wait on, which I believe the release date for the English version is uh, January of 2024. So I will have to wait a little bit for that last one, but that's fine. I especially don't want to wait though with this series because I do think the plot is a tiny bit meandering and a little convoluted sometimes, which is fine because that's not actually the part that I care about at all. So we're following, it's a historical fiction manga, and we're looking at a group of people who are trying to find this missing gold. And anybody who finds this is just going to be rich beyond their imagining. Like they can't even fathom pretty much how rich they're going to be. And our main character, Sugimoto, wants this money to help take care of a widow that he knew the soldier who was married to this woman. And when the soldier died during battle, he vowed to then try to take care of the widow and he needs a lot of money because she has some health concerns. So you pretty quickly are rooting for this character to find the gold, and then you are starting to see other individuals throughout the story who are interested in the gold as well for their own reasons. But Sugimoto ends up allying himself with this young girl who is a, an indigenous individual from 
Japan. And this is where the story is. I just, I feel like this is where its strengths are, is in the hunting that the knowledge this girl has of hunting, of nature and wildlife, of how it changes depending on the season. Uh, and then there's all these wonderful cultural things like these dances they do and how they make clothes out of certain things and how they treat certain animals and their views towards certain animals and what they eat. And it's just amazing. And it's just that aspect of the story just continues to get better. The part I was reading about last night, they were learning, a, well, she was teaching the other character about how they use this tree bark to create clothing and she's describing all this and then there's this very large fish that she's talking about how they use that even to make clothing and how they use it also to try and get poison on their arrowheads and things like that and it's just also a really entertaining funny story because there's so much about eating in this and and the different ways that they cook things and the way they use different parts to eat and so when she's describing this uh the way that they make this clothing out of this fish she then is like but the problem is it also tastes really good so do we use it for later or do we eat it now and then the character's like we should eat it now and they're just always sitting and eating and it seems so random i feel like every time i describe it it's like what even is this story but if you i know this is gonna sound goofy but if you have ever watched anything on national geographic and been like wow that's so interesting about animals about wildlife about the way that indigenous peoples have learned about all this and the way that they, the relationship they have with the land. And if you've ever watched any of that and been like, wow, people are so intelligent and it's amazing what people are capable of and it's amazing the circumstances in which people can survive in. Anything like that, if you've ever had any thoughts and if you also like watching cooking shows or anything like that, Golden Kamui is perfect for you. And it's just so, I've, I genuinely, every time I pick it up, I feel like I'm learning something and those parts are truly captivating. I love them and I I love her. She's my she's one of my new favorite characters. The more I read about her, the more I love her. And I also think that the story is quite funny. There's a part where a character has to try and save somebody who's fallen in the water and the water's freezing cold, so he takes his clothes off so he can jump into the water and then he, his clothes won't be cold as well. And just like Goofy, the way that they censor it is really silly. And then they also just always make really weird faces when they're eating or other... There's just a lot of great jokes in there too. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, the plot is not what I'm reading the story for, but I've loved Golden Kamui and I can't wait to read more. The reason that I... Another reason I should say that I only plan to read two, probably about one every week, is because... It also takes me much longer to read those than something like Yona because there's a lot more text to read first off and then there's also so much to take in because you're learning so much and then because there's a lot of players you could say in the story it's kind of like wait who's this again okay that's this person this is why they're doing that so there's a lot to kind of keep track of but primarily it's all the uh the interesting things to learn in that story it's really great and then i find myself stopping to look things up looking at things about the wolves and the population of, of the wolves that are no really, they pretty much don't exist anymore and things like that. So just, it just feels, I don't know. I just really love it. I just, it's fantastic. I, I'm kind of stumbling over my words, but that's basically it. It's great. I love it. I can't wait to read more. Yona. Yona, I, like I said, I'm all caught up on and I plan to do a non-spoiler review for everything that's out. Uh, but it's not a spoiler, so it, I guess it doesn't really matter. But uh, regardless, this is a story that I feel like it has just gotten, for me, better and better the more I've read. When it first starts, like a lot of manga, I think it starts kind of campy and it throws a lot out at you very quickly. And then it kind of just does its own thing for a while. It meanders for a bit. And the plot is moving very quickly where it feels like, are we ever going to get more than just surface level. The setup is you follow this young woman named Yona whose father was killed and it was 
at the hand of somebody that she cared very much about. So it's this great betrayal and she goes on the run with her bodyguard and then as she is trying to survive in the wild and escape and make sure they don't find her and kill her, she also realizes that she probably needs some aid and she finds that in these ancient dragon warriors and so they are all allying themselves with her and she's kind of collecting them and that's a big thing at the beginning. That's pretty much the main plot for a long time and then after that it kind of seems like where are we gonna go? What are we gonna do? But for me that's when the story really got when it started to shine because I find I found pretty quickly the antagonist you could call them of the story interesting in that it kind of created a dilemma as a reader you're like well they betrayed her they did this horrible act of violence they seem like they just want revenge or power or something but I also think there's more to them and when are we going to see more and the dilemma is that what if this person in the long run actually made the right decision by taking part in this betrayal because maybe they would maybe they would be a better ruler. Would that actually be what's best for everybody, even though it's come at the cost that it has and that it's affected our main character so much? So I felt like there were glimpses throughout the beginning of, well, maybe there's more to this person. Maybe there's going to be some moral dilemmas that come up. Maybe there's going to be a lot of sacrifice in this story. Not in the typical, like, look at all these people that died or anything like that, because character deaths are obviously very impactful sacrifices in stories, but not necessarily like that. It's more of a putting aside your own feelings as the reader, the characters putting aside their own feelings for the greater good. And I feel like that's what's made this story really a lot better. I also think the kind of the goofy humor, the story is always funny, but I think that the humor has gotten better. And I don't want to say more tasteful, like it was so awful before, but it, there'd be times where something serious is happening and then everybody's being extra flirty and you're like, okay, but we're trying to deal with this really significant drug trade problem or like human trafficking and we're making jokes right now and I feel like maybe we should take a sec to realize the severity of the situation. So I do feel like the timing of certain jokes and things like that has gotten better. It starts a little surface level and I just feel like the depth that the story, the potential it had for depth has definitely been met further in. So that's really exciting. It is very, very angsty for so long. And I think that the angst has not necessarily gone away, but just like everything else, I just think everything's balancing better the further in you get. So have I've been having a really good time with this. I can't wait for the next volume. There are some new characters that have been introduced and it seems like we're gonna be diving more into them. And at some point I'm kind of like, how many more things? Like how long is the series gonna be? I kind of just want to know because it's not done. <laughs> so I kind of just want to know how much is there? I, I'll probably have to look into that, but I am glad that I'm all caught up. I'm having quite a good time with that. So anyway, that's the current check-in. I plan to now pick up the next couple of volumes of Paper Girls. Uh, saga and 20th Century Boys, and if I can, also Girl from the Other Side. So that's it for now, and I'll check back in once I've gotten around to those. Finally, wrapping up this vlog, I have quite a few things to still discuss. We have 20th Century Boys, Tokyo Ghoul Volume 2, Ancient Magus's Bride Volume 2, Saga, Paper Girls, Girl from the Other Side. So I'll start with Girl from the Other Side, and I'll just be really brief in saying that I did finish that series because the deluxe edition of the fourth one has since come out since starting this reading vlog and I'm gonna actually save I'm gonna do a new manga releases video where I talk about that one the new witch hat atelier and the new spy family volumes so I will I'll just say that I loved it I think it continues to be very abstract a little convoluted very sad very heartbreaking and wholesome at the same time so I absolutely loved it and I'll go a little bit more in depth in that next video. But I'm going to I'm going to talk about Tokyo Ghoul for a second. When I started this, it was in one of my try a volume videos and I was a little hesitant to continue on because the first volume was very introductory, which makes sense, of course, because that's what a lot of first volumes are, but it almost dragged a little for me because the whole idea is that you have 
ghouls and you have people and our main character is somebody who in through some bizarre circumstances ends up having a little bit of both and he is now kind of stuck between both worlds and he's used to being a human so he's learning more about the ghouls and their community we'll say and in this second volume it went from i don't know i'm unsure to okay i definitely want to keep reading more the second volume got so much more interesting and i'm very glad i continued on i wasn't going to just stop i always planned to keep going but i'm just very glad i did and i already have the third one my local bookstores tend to have a lot of volumes of this so if i can i'll try to pick more up or i'll get some from the library but this second volume it went from the introduction in the first to now we're setting up more big picture things. In the second one, we're bringing in additional threats. And we're also seeing, I guess you could say, the humanity in the ghouls. You're seeing that there's good and bad in them, just like there's good and bad in people. And it's almost like the good ghouls up against the more sinister or the people that don't understand within the humans. And I like the idea of that being going head to head because thus far our only experience with ghouls at the beginning is that they're bad and they feed on people so being able to see a little bit more I think is really exciting so definitely really enjoyed picking up the second volume of this I wouldn't say I had the exact opposite experience with Ancient Magus' Bride but it was a little different so the first volume to me had a lot of potential as far as what I thought the story could be, where it could go. I thought it seemed so magical. It takes a lot of the things we're familiar with in fantasy, things like fae and fairies and alchemists and all these different kinds of magical beings or systems, and it sort of combines all of it together. And it feels very short story leaning, and usually I would describe it as episodic, but it really feels more like short story. It feels like you get a complete arc, I'll say, I was about to say another, I was about to say complete story, but uh, a complete arc within a very short amount of time that it feels like the main character will go somewhere and witness something, but it's more about the people or the magical beings that she's encountering while she's there. And it very much feels like eventually we're going to get a much bigger arc and that the character is going to become more prevalent in her own story and her relationship with the individual who purchased her, we'll say, um, that that is going to grow and that is going to be more explained and we'll get more information about them. It still continues to have the weird relationship factor where you're like, is it like paternal? Is it romantic? It's, it's a little odd. And I know a lot of you even said like, yeah, it's a little odd. So there is that we're on the same page <laughs> of that part of the story. So it's, I'm just, I guess, glad that it's reaffirmed for me that, oh yeah, it's a little weird. Um, I'll, I do plan to keep going, but I just want to continue my thought about it initially feeling short story leaning. I think the second one still has pieces of that, but it's starting to allude to a, an enemy, we'll say, an antagonist that's probably going to be around for a little longer. It feels very fairy tale in that it has kind of a grim fairy tale feeling where certain things will be very sweet and whimsical and innocent and then cue something dark and sinister and very tragic coming into the picture. So I do feel like it has a lot of gut punches, even in the short amounts of time that we're with certain characters, but I'm still kind of waiting for the bigger plots to start to unfold or for it to feel a little less like we're just going from one place to the next, one short story to the next. So it's not that I enjoyed it less, it's just that I don't... Tokyo Ghoul is like, okay, we're setting up for the bigger thing now. And this one, it feels like we're just still getting pieces. So maybe it's just going to take a little longer before I'm really fully engrossed. I do want to eventually continue on with both of them, though. I don't want to continue on with 20th Century Boys. Uh, I mentioned in a video I did about, I think it was Unpopular Opinions, that... I alluded to this vlog. I said, I have a vlog. We'll talk, I'll talk about it more, but 20th Century Boys is not working for me. And it's kind of a staple among manga fans, but nothing was working for me in this. I didn't care about the plot. I didn't find it interesting. I don't like a single character that has been presented to us. And that would be kind of fine if I was really interested in the plot, but I don't care about the plot. So I was kind of hoping to care about the characters. I don't care about all of them. They're all annoying. I find none of them likable. I don't care about any of their personal lives. And I know I, I didn't read 
obviously a tremendous amount of it, but I just, it was like off-putting. I, and it's not the fault of the manga. I'm not saying the manga is off-putting or that it's bad, it's objectively terrible or anything. There's just something about it that was just, it was like aggravating to me. <laughs> and I, I don't know if I can quite pinpoint what it was. I think part of it is that because there is this very odd cult-like group and there are really strange things that are occurring, it seems like there's going to be almost a murder mystery element to it or just a mystery in general that I kind of was hoping to some degree that the story would be more rooted in reality when looking at the main characters or looking at characters that you encounter and then it would make the strangeness stand out even more and it would make you really question, is this, is there some kind of magic going on? Is there some kind of something to do with aliens or something, some paranormal thing? Or is this like a mastermind person who's manipulating everybody and tricking everybody? And so I kind of wanted that really intense juxtaposition. And instead it's like the characters are all kind of quirky and silly. And look, when we were younger, we were all goofy, guys and like I don't know I just wasn't I didn't care about any of them I didn't care about anything and the art style is it's odd it's like it doesn't there's something about the art style that's not working either and that's not to say the art is bad at all I think especially the backgrounds and the landscape is very good and it's a distinct style it almost feels like old newspaper cartoons which I think is very fitting of the fact that it is rooted more in reality but I don't know, the art wasn't clicking with me either. So I feel so bad because I was so excited to finally start this one. I was like, oh, my husband really loves it. And we have a lot of the volumes because he's a fan. I have friends that are really big fans. I can't wait to finally get into it, dig my teeth into it. I've managed to avoid any spoilers and I don't care. I don't care about, I, I was just ready. The further in I read, the more I was not wanting to read more, which is the opposite of what you want. And then speaking of things that are just sort of bizarrely grating for no reason at all, they just don't seem to be working, is Paper Girls. So I did a try a volume for Brian K. Vaughn's saga, Paper Girls, and Why the Last Man, which I immediately was like, I can't do more of Why the Last Man, because the main character is too profoundly stupid for me. I can't do it. And, uh, I was really excited to keep going with Saga. Paper Girls, I was kind of in the middle. I liked the dialogue. I think that Brian K. Vaughn writes really witty, funny banter. And the way people talk feels like how people actually talk. It's very, it's not politically correct whatsoever, but it's like the roughness of people and their sharp edges are represented really well. And so I was definitely wanting to continue with Paper Girls, but there's something about the setting, the type of paranormal activity, I'll say that phrase again, the type of paranormal elements in the story that I just, I don't like. And it's not the story. It's that, it's that setting. And I find the show Stranger Things. I have never wanted to watch that show. I have no interest in it. I, I would come to the table with a bias already of like, I just already hate this. <laughs> and it's not anything to do with the actors, the writing, the storytelling. It's nothing to do with that. It's just like the setting is not for me. With Paper Girls, I was like, I should try to push through that because I feel like there's probably a really fun, interesting, quirky, dark story in here that I might really enjoy. But... I, when I was reading it, I was like, I'd rather just be reading Saga. <laughs> I'd rather keep going with Saga. I don't really want to read this that bad. And it is still kind of just not working. And I don't know how to describe that. And I'm very curious saying all this. What are certain settings that for you, for whatever reason, they just don't work? Is it like the traditional sword and sorcery in fantasy? Is it like sci-fi on another planet? Or is there any kind of thing that for whatever reason, your brain is just not interested at all? because I want to know if I'm alone in this. And I know it's dumb voicing it aloud. I'm like, I just know it's stupid, but I don't know. I didn't think it was fair is what I'm trying to get at to that story for me to know that it wasn't working for reasons that have nothing to do with the story itself. That said, I did continue on with Saga and I am having a really good time with it. I am really enjoying these characters. What I said of the dialogue from Paper Girls applies here as well. I like these characters, I like this story, I like this sci fantasy blend, and continuing on with the story, I feel like already in the next parts that I got to, I'm starting to see 
that sadness that so many people talk about when they pick up Saga and how heartbreaking it can be. I wouldn't say I was emotionally torn up. I haven't been emotionally torn up just yet. There are things that I'm like, oh no, but not that devastated by, and I've heard it gets very devastating. So if I'm already getting glimpses, I am fearful for what I'm going to feel further into the story. But Saga is definitely delivering. It is everything I was hoping it would be, and I'm glad that I kept going with it. But I believe that finally wraps up this reading vlog. I, I, at the beginning, I think I talked more about Golden Kamui. Still absolutely love Golden Kamui. I, I don't know that I'll get through as much of it this year as I was hoping to, because I do read those a lot slower since it's historical fiction and it's very rooted in a lot of factual things that I don't know that much about. And so I kind of want to take my time and learn as I'm reading. It feels like I'm almost watching a, a mix of a movie and a documentary at the same time. And so I just don't know that it I am going to get through as much as I would like. But I do want to read more Golden Kamui soon. Anyway, I've enjoyed a lot of what I've picked up, some of which, as you can see, I didn't enjoy quite as much. But the nice thing about having a few stories that I'm like, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to keep going with this, is it means it opens the door for me to finally get around to some other things. And one thing I'm very excited to finally get back to and start over and just keep going would be Monstrous because the art in that series is so good and I've heard phenomenal things about it. I've, I hear it's great fantasy. I hear it's very difficult and dense at first, but like once you get into it, it's really engrossing. So I'm very excited to pick that up soon. Uh, and of course, there's plenty of other things that I'm hoping to get around to. But that's it. Let me know your thoughts either on these stories or if you have suggestions, recommendations for other things based off of what I have liked. And I do really want to know. I am very curious about the setting question that I posed. I, I want to know your answers. But anyway, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.